Joining us now is Urgy, okay, <laughs> with stories trending around the world. Urginika, take charge. What's going on, Dr. Time really? to take charge. <laughs> Thank you. I will. Good morning. How are Good you? Morning. Great. Good morning, Tundu. How are you, darling? Great. Fine. Thanks. Good morning, Rufai. How are you this morning? Lady in red, Urgy. How are you? I'm doing excellent. Uh, is, How are is that you? red? Are you looking? Yes, it yeah. is red. Okay, good. It's the Arise Red. <laughs> oh, yeah, the Arise Red. Yes. Okay, okay. You All know, right. we need to take color lessons. Right. Yeah. Well, Thanks. good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United Kingdom, high-ranking members of the royal family were noticeably silent as the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, celebrated their third wedding anniversary on Wednesday. To celebrate the occasion, Harry and Meghan announced that their foundation will build a new community relief center in Mumbai, India, now dealing with a devastating second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. In the United States, reactions drill as Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi calls for a boycott of the 2022 Winter Olympics in Beijing. She criticized China for human rights abuses and said global leaders who attend will lose their moral authority. Chinese foreign ministry in response has said that Pelosi's remarks were full of lies and that human rights were developing vigorously in China. In France, some Nigerians took to the streets of Paris where President Mohamedou Buhari is attending the Africa Finance Summit to protest against what they call a failing nation. Some carried placards which read, innocent Nigerians are dying daily and harassed Buhari out of Paris. In Nigeria, the announcement by the Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sarika, that the new national carrier, which he unveiled in 2018 at the Fanborough International Air Show in London, will now take off in the first quarter of 2022, set social media abuzz. Under sports, the Nigeria Football Federation has confirmed that the Super Eagles will play Mexico in an exhibition match at the LA Coliseum in Los Angeles, California on July 3rd. The match will be the sixth encounter between the senior teams of both countries. Finally, under entertainment, HBO Max has released the new trailer for the highly anticipated Friends Reunion special. The trailer shows the cast reunited at the comedy's original studio, Stage 24, for an unscripted celebration of the iconic NBC series. Oh my God! Cindy, you are too happy. <laughs> I can see you smiling. I can not wait. Yes, it, it is. It is my favorite show. It was really. so good, wasn't it? So, so classic. Good. I yes. love Jennifer Aniston. I do. All she's of them. Great. Yeah, all of Excellent. them are great, but she's my favorite. Excellent. Yes. Well, let's begin what's trending with reactions trailing the Nigerian Senate's decision to consider a bill which prescribes a 15-year jail sentence for anyone who pays or receives ransom in the country. The proposed bill, tagged the Terrorism Prevention Amendment Bill 2021, scaled second reading at Wednesday's plenary. Senator Ezingwa Francis Onyewuchi, who sponsored the bill during plenary session, raised alarm at the rising spate of kidnappings in the country. He attributed it to factors such as corruption, unemployment, poverty, and the connivance of security agents putting Nigerians at risk. While many Nigerians have shared mixed reactions, let's take some tweets. From investigative journalist Visaya Soyombo, who wrote, The Senate is considering a bill that slams 15 years in jail on anyone who pays ransom to kidnappers, a strong candidate for joke of the year. First of all, what is the penalty for leaders under whose watch the people are abducted? How many years in jail? Another tweet from Ade reads, laughable, 15 years for parents who decided to rescue their kids while you watch, and your ruler gallivants around the country, and the state governor sacks the parents. Tundu, your take on the story. I mean, I'm horrified. I think this is a strong candidate for joke of the year. It might be the winner. I'm completely <laughs> horrified. I mean, I don't know where to begin. In Nigeria, we have to provide our own electricity. We all have inverters. We have generators. We have to provide our own security. We're our own government. So paying ransom is just another indication that we do not trust the government. Are you going to penalize 
anxious relatives, anxious friends who um, have to save money or have to raise money, sorry, to pay ransom. Who, who actually wants to use their hard-earned money to pay ransom? People only do that out of desperation because what are the options? Sheikh Gumi, in his um, interview with Faith, our colleague here, Faith, was talking about how he was trying to negotiate without ransom payment, but some parents went sort of behind his back to make payments. I don't blame those parents. No offense to him. You know, he was effective in that regard. But people simply cannot take chances with the lives of their children. So the whole point should be the government or Senator Onyewuchi should stop pointing fingers at the victims in all this and look within. The government must create an environment where kidnapping becomes completely impossible. That if you even so much as conceive a kidnap plot, intelligence will be such that you'll be swooped in, arrested immediately. Not that people who are victims of crime are then penalized for trying to find a way out. I it love makes your sense. point, Tundu, about the fact uh, that the government should create an environment that can enable us not pay ransom, because he also raised the fact that, you know, paying ransom in other crimes it does not work. And, you know, I tend to go with that as well. So we really need to find a paying way to Paying ransom in other crimes doesn't Yes, work. paying ransom is it's not allowed in the U.S. I mean, they, they, they frown upon paying but ransom. But then you don't go to jail for yeah. 15 years. Well, that's another caveat to that. Dr. Abati. Well, Senator uh, Uchenna, uh, which is in now when uh, was seeking the amendment of section 14 of the terrorism act of 2014 or 2004 and they wants it uh, you know terrorism prevention amendment act 2021 this is the bill now the bill has now been referred to the committee on uh, human rights and justice for further legislative work and we hope that that uh, committee uh, will listen to public reaction take along, you know, in its uh, considerations, how the public has reacted to this. Uh, the, uh, propose, the person who proposed the bill, Senator Yewuchi, is referring to the Terrorism Act of the UK and the no concessions policy of the uh, United States, under which, you know, you are not allowed to pay uh, ransom. Right. But yes, it's very good to compare, to say this is how it is in America. <laughs> This is how even people who have never been to America, I hear them oh, no. oftentimes in Nigeria saying, this is how they do it in the oh, U.S. No. Now, how they do That's it in the I'm U.S., thinking. how they do it in the U.S. is that the life of every citizen is very important. Yes. Now, here in Nigeria, nobody should even be kidnapped. Here in Nigeria, kidnapping has become a big enterprise. There is a whole industry around it. Because it's an environment where even hard work no longer pays. Right. Workers are not getting basic salary. You know, those who get basic salary, it is being wiped out by inflation. In fact, inflation is going to go up if we begin to pay 385 naira per liter for fuel. So you are likely to have more kidnappings, more banditry. Now, so it's not enough to say, oh, the, the, the victim, persons who have suffered, who are trying to resort to self-help, to sort themselves out. We go to jail for 15 years. Okay. Is Senator Yewuchi proposing, therefore, that if this law were to be in place in the future, the parents of the uh, Afaka 39, he will, say, he, will, he will insist that they should be sent to jail, or we insist that the uh, parents of uh, uh, the students of Kangara should also be jailed. So this is the contradiction in it. However, you know, if you look at the details of the bill as proposed, it was even handed. He complained about how banditry has become a business, how that is not good and all that. And then he says, whoever pays ransom, as they do it in the U.S., I don't know how many times he's been there, you know, that this is the punishment they should be given. But he also recognized the fact that, you know, government has a responsibility right. to provide security, uh, to do a lot more to uh, prevent kidnapping and to address. He point. also talked about the need to address poverty alleviation. I like that point. Now, so... In terms of content, is balanced. But I think he misplaced the punishment. His bill should have been proposing that any government official who is negligent in providing an enabling environment or ensuring that, you know, salaries are, are uh, who fails to pay salaries or who aids and abets kidnapping should be sent to jail for 15 Dr. years. Dr. they need to hire so you to is, write is, this is bill. So it's is uh, where he placed the burden. Correct. Of punishment. That is wrong. Correct. Yeah. It's, it's the wrong people that he is proposing should go to jail. Very the well people said. that should be jailed are the people who have provided a situation whereby 
you know, Nigerians are not safe. The U.S. that is coaching. When uh, one guy was uh, abducted in uh, Nigeria and was brought into Nigeria, they sent a special team of a SEAL, Navy SEAL, to come and rescue him. How many people do we rescue like that? If it is one person, they will say, oh, it's only one person. Yes. That's the kind of response you are likely no, to get from Nigeria. Even apart from that, are people in America getting dragged out of their cars and abducted on Fifth Avenue? It's not happening. No. Here it is. Are people going to school and being, uh, being abducted en masse? It's not happening. I hate victim blaming in any kind of context. You Very cannot be more correct than <laughs> Professor Peter Rewa's voice. <laughs> Refai, your take on the story. Oh, yeah, I hate hypocrisy in my life. Yeah. Hypocrisy. This is just a joke called Nigeria. It's the hypocrisy that is the joke, really. And that's what is evident there. And it's so quick, like Dr. Abati Antunda described. Some people are quick to shout America. Didn't we see Iran hostage crisis? Didn't America negotiate with Iran? So what are we saying? Why didn't America send in troops overnight, go in there and rescue the hostage, if it was that easy? We all saw our Iran hostage crisis. Even if we were not alive, then we saw it play out. Why didn't America just enter there and just go? Didn't that crisis lead to, uh, what's his name now, uh, uh, Pre Pre President Jimmy Carter losing his presidency? We just talk America, 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 America. In this same country, the Minister of Information come out to say that banditry is not a federal crime. Right. How about we make laws to make banditry a federal crime in the first place? Now, somebody is saying bringing amendment, eh, 15 years for those that pay ransom. Fear God, though. Fear God. People, you can't provide security for people. People are complaining that the state is failing other people every day. Then you want to punish people that are trying to find a way out. So what, when they, once they kidnap you now, what should you do? Or they kidnap somebody close, you should wait so that the kidnappers will kill them and not even make any contact. You can't intervene, nothing can be done. Isn't it bad enough that the security agencies are stretched out, can't even provide security for the people? The United Nations said 300 police officers per 100,000 population. We have less than that in this country. We, we are not effectively policed. The next thing you say, 15 years for those that want to rescue their family members. I think what he should do, he should take a gun and kill all of us. That's what that lawmaker should do, because that's what he means invariably. He should take a gun and kill all of us, so that we will not be in the country again. The next thing, you are citing America. Let's fear God. Let's stop this hypocrisy. This country is bleeding already. Does anybody have... Do you think people are happy to sell their livelihood? Somebody was talking the other day. They sold their, their ancestral land to pay ransom. To, you think they are smiling? When they are paying ransom to bandits, you think they are happy when they are counting the ransom money and paying it in the bush and risking their lives. And somebody has the effrontery to come up here and say like they do in the UK. <laughs> well said, Rafai. We'll take another story. The Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, has come under fire on social media for comparing the ban on open grazing by Southern governors to the prohibition of spare parts trading in the North. The Attorney General made the statement in an interview while reacting to the Southern Governor's decision. He said, it is a dangerous provision for any governor in Nigeria to think they can bring any compromise on the freedom of liberty of individuals to move around. Comparing the move to Northern governors coming to prohibit spare parts trading in the North, Abu Bakr Malami insisted that the ban does not align with the provisions of the Constitution in the context of human rights. Let's take a tweet from Emmy, who wrote, you guys can go ahead and ban spare parts in the North since you compare trespassing into people's land to legitimate sales of motor parts. Teach your headsmen how to run their businesses the way the spare parts marketers does and everybody will be fine. Tundu, before I take your comment, we'll have to go on a very short break. And when we return, what's trending on the morning show will continue. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Morning Show. We're still on What's Trending. Tundu, before we went on a break, I took that story of the Attorney General's statement when he compared the ban on open grazing by the Southern governors to um, the prohibition of spare parts trading in the North. I think that's a false equivalence that he made there. He's referring to Section 41 of the Constitution that guarantees freedom of movement 
all over the country to all Nigerians, and you cannot be expelled from any part of the country. That's what he's referring to. However, we have a pressing security issue at the moment. Nobody has any problem with lawful herders. We never have. We all grew up with, you know, herders roaming the country. But now we have a new breed of herders that are brandishing AK-47s. So he should, it's kind of disingenuous of him to talk about it like it's just about cattle rearing. It is not. It has taken a sinister dimension. And it would be remiss, actually irresponsible, of Southern governors to fail to act to curb this menace. So I think it's false equivalence on that score. Now, spare parts traders in the North do not have AK-47s. Do not shoot down their customers. If there's some kind of disagreement, they don't kill them which is what is happening with the herders and the farmers. So it's completely different. And I really like that he would raise the spare parts issue. Whereas when Hizba goes and destroys the stock of Christians See? trading in Kano, what do we hear? Crickets, not a peep. And so this is, is part of the problem that right. we're facing. This is the kind of tension that we're facing in the country. When people don't feel a sense of belonging, when people feel that some are more equal than others in some kind of sick or Orwellian way, and people just want to leave, they want to secede from this country. I don't appreciate this kind of comparison to lawful businessmen, comparing right. them to criminals. Come on now. Well, that point that you raised about the Hizba, a lot of Nigerians are saying that his comments are quite insensitive and very tribalistic. Well, the office of the uh, Attorney General of the Federation is provided for in Section 150 of the 1999 Constitution. And the functions of the Attorney General are very clear. He's the Chief Law Officer of the Federation. He's the Chief Legal Advisor to the Federal Government of Nigeria. At the state level, uh, Section 195 provides for, uh, you know, Attorney Generals of the states. However, you know, I think the first problem we have with this comment by the uh, Attorney General, is that when an Attorney General begins to double into politics, it becomes a very untidy uh, situation. And it's one of the reasons why persons have been arguing that we need to separate the office of the Attorney General of the Federation from the office of the Minister of Justice. Justice. Because the Minister of Justice is a political appointee. The Attorney General of the Federation is just to focus on the law. So this is a problem that I see here. Because in this particular instance, the Attorney General of the Federation responding to the 17 governors of the South uh, is crossing the line from discussion of law into partisan politics. That's the first point. The second point, yes, Tundu, you are right, is referring to Section 41 of the 1999 Constitution. Section 41 of the 1999 Constitution does not talk about cattle. It talks about persons. It says every person. You know, and this is without being presumptuous. I don't imagine that I can teach the Attorney General of the Federation law. You know, he's a senior advocate of Nigeria and all that. But with due respect, the governors of the, uh, of the 17 uh, southern states, what they are talking about is cattle going about on foot and disturbing uh, people in the southern part of the country. I, if I recall, that 12-point uh, communique, there's no way they say northerners have been banned in the southwest. Nobody has banned the Fulani or anybody from any part of Nigeria in the southwest or in the southeast. You can go anywhere. You know, but the issue is about cattle, cattle grazing. Right. And that's why they are calling for ranching. They are not calling for the ranching of human beings. They are calling for the ranching of cattle. The third point, the uh, analogy, yes. I think, is entirely misplaced. Right. You know, uh, on one hand here, look, southerners, the, the southern governors, they can say, yes, okay, don't even bring the cattle. They will eat fish. There are even southerners who have set up their own ranches, okay, if the issue is about the economic conflict that is indicated. And the people selling their spare parts in the north, uh, if they come from a particular part of the country, maybe from the south, uh, uh, southeast or the southwest, okay, they, could, they will gladly say, okay, we will leave. We will not sell spare parts uh, in the north again, okay, in terms of cost. The people in the south, they have an alternative. They can eat fish. They can eat snails. Okay, if you don't have spare parts, how do you maintain your vehicles? How do you replace vehicle parts? So that's why I think that the analogy is a bit misplaced. But what is more important is I would like a situation whereby the Attorney General of the Federation uh, doesn't get involved in partisan politics and just concentrates on the job of defending the rule of law, which is what is important in this regard. Dr. Vati, Rafai, your take on this story. I saw the interview yesterday full on, quite very sad. Uh, the fact that as a nation, 
with the might and the size of Nigeria and the potential it's got, that our national discourse has been reduced to issues about Malu. That is the cow. It's problematic. Malu means cow. It's a local parlance for cow. That what we sit and talk about is Malu. Then it's problematic. And when you sense the body reaction of the Attorney General, you expect more from an Attorney General in cases like this. At first, an Attorney General is trying to distort the law. Section 41 talks about movement of persons. I mean, Tunda and Dr. Bati have said it enough. So why twist it? Cattles are not human beings, except if you are telling us that cattles have become human beings in this country, or you're giving them human status. Sometimes, maybe we need to check. Look at the open grazing law. They've had this since 1965 in the north, the northern open grazing law. That's for the north. But in the 70s, we had the Land Use Act that vests the power of land in the hands of the state governors. And that still subsists. The state governors still call the shots on the land. In the Abel Ragba case, what is residual should be left for the residual. So why is the Attorney General talking as though there's another law he's quoting from in this country, trying to play technicality with us? And we have seen the signs, and the next thing, you use a very tribalistic slur by saying spare parts. That was the, that was the outrage Because we all know that the major reply. dealers in spare parts are the Igbos. That was the outrage on social media. But why are you doing this? At first, you've put forward Ruga. We said no, just because of this same land. To come and collect land from people and call it settlement for Malu. You went further ahead, you put forward a water bill. We said no. Let's... Let's temper, let's cool things down. We all want this country to work. Let's all come together and talk. Let's not inflame passions. We should all be statesmen in the collective development of this country. Nobody is bigger than any other person. All right, Rafai, well said. We'll take our final story. Following the assault allegation against radio host and human rights activist Ahmad Issa, who was seen in a viral video slapping a woman he had interviewed, Reports that the radio host has accused the British Broadcasting Corporation of attempted assassination circulated online. The news outfit has dismissed the allegation as untrue and says it stands by its reporters and journalism. This is quite shocking, Tundu. He had accused the BBC and the reporter of assassination attempt. I don't understand what's going on with this man. I am glad that he has apologized. He has apologized to the woman that he slapped in that viral video. But this is so uncalled for. I can't believe the story that's coming out of this man. I'm pretty baffled. <laughs> I mean, the BBC is facing its own accusations yes. in the UK, but nothing close to assassination. So all of a sudden, BBC journalists are trying to murder you. It's bizarre. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm completely baffled. Yes, if I don't I understand it, then I have no comment, because yes. I really I don't <laughs> get it. <laughs> Dr. Abati, your quick comment before we wrap well, up. <laughs> the BBC is in a position to yes. define itself. Correct. And as an organization, it has done so to say that this is not true. The BBC correspondent was at that event, Nkanga, Peter, I think that's his name, and on the basis of it, he did a documentary. Uh, you know, and then uh, uh, our, our colleague, uh, Ahmed Issa, now says the BBC wants to assassinate him. So it looks so unbelievable. But I think, you know, uh, Ahmed Issa has been doing a great job. He has. But I think the time has come for him maybe to take a little vacation. <laughs> because you know this thing called journalism, it can be it's very stressful, stressful you oh. know, and uh, you won't know when you begin to uh, misbehave. Very well Maybe said, he needs a vacation. Much. He probably does. I yes. hope he's listening. Well, thank, thank you, you guys. Much. That's all I have for you guys thank on What's Trending today. See you tomorrow.